Alright guys, welcome to the video on Ocean, and a little bit on Kerr first, um, but this is my favorite map, as you saw from the title, and I want to explain why real quick. Um, this is just a fat, sped up version of the minimap, and I want you to see exactly what happens this game. We split relatively evenly, um, majority of our ships actually end up going south, as you can see along the 2-3 line. Um, but we have three, de three destroyers down south and one destroyer in sea, and that's pretty important um, which, because it means that we basically have to get the A-B caps uh, in order to win this game. And as you can see, we've already lost one of them. Um, yeah, I want you to really notice the kind of flow of this game and how it all worked. Um, the initial splits were they sent most of their team, in fact more of their team, to uh, A than we did, so our team was usually going to have to kite that side, which means we kind of have to push in to C. And, well, my team leaves me. As you can see, I'm up at C, and the Ohio, Hindenburg, Des Moines, and Shimikaze all leave me here. Um, we do end up getting their Kerr first there, as you can see in C, but I'm left alone here against a Clever, another Destroyer, and a Republic. Um, eventually, the Shima decides to come back, but at this point, you can see... All the caps are contested, or not contested, in the enemy's control, and we have very little hope of winning this game. Um, we basically just have to hold off their push, but as you can see, they have Stalingrad, Stalingrad, Kremlin, and then a Republic on the flank. So it's going to be pretty difficult for us. Um, we eventually get C back, but um, yeah, this game kind of spiraled out of control pretty quick, but... Um, as far as the flow of Ocean, I really enjoy it because there's two kind of flanks with this middle support of B, and everybody kind of rotates around it left and right. Um, you can kind of see how that that works. We kind of had control of the upper left, and now we have control of the upper right. They have control of the bottom right, and then they got control of the bottom left. So there's this nice flow. Um, I also really like Ocean because it allows you to push in without dealing with um, ships hidden behind islands. Um, I find that really frustrating to deal with pushing into, uh, you know, like a Wooster, let's say, behind an island, or a Smolensk, or, uh, well, Smolensk can smoke up, but a Colbert behind an island. Ships like that, it's pretty difficult for me to, uh, push into that. Whereas Ocean, you can kind of get a little more aggressive, and that's kind of why I like it. It's, it doesn't give these crutches that are islands, uh, to high explosive spam cruisers, but, I just wanted to go over that real quick, um, just before we get into this video, just because I think Ocean's a cool map, and you don't really get to see the flow of it very often, since it's such a rare map. Um, you know, call it lazy game design or whatever, but uh, this is a great map. I, I love it. Um, and it, it really feels like kind of a straight-up contest between two teams. Um, it's my favorite map to get when we play uh, Supremacy League back in the day, or... Um, well, I haven't seen a clan battles on this map yet, but, uh, here's to hoping, right? Um, but, yeah, so more on battleship on this map. Um, really, it's all about supporting your destroyers at the start. Um, as you can see down south, our DDs are not doing that well, despite, um, all of our, uh, ships being relatively close. But, as you can see, they got radar, so... I'm trying to actually crossfire onto these Stalingrads. Um, it's not terribly successful because I'm in a Kerr first, but I also kind of miss sometimes too. Um, but the important thing is getting that radar away because, well, they're killing our destroyers with it. Um, I don't know how they're able to push in like this without losing too much health, considering we do have a uh, Conqueror there and a Wooster, which should be able to rain some pretty good fire on them, but uh, what do I know, I guess, right? I'm up here. Um, so, as you can see, we would have a pretty decent position if this Ohio pushed around the flank with me, or even pushed into C cap with me. Um, but that's not what happens, as you can remember. Um, but Kerr first isn't bad on this map. Um, it struggles a bit, um, as you can see. I'm running, um, I'm running a secondary build with my 11.7 uh, kilometers range, and you might think that's horrible on this map, but it's actually better than most maps. Um, because of those islands like I was talking about. The islands uh, stop you from pushing in. They don't actually help you push in most of the time, unless they're tall enough that um, cruisers can't spam over them, but most islands aren't that tall. 
Uh, so, in fact, I'd rather have no islands than have little islands um, when I'm playing a brawling battleship, as surprising as that is. Because um, we get to push in here to see relatively uncontested since, well, they don't have any cruisers up here, which is nice, but um, it's hard for them to spam me with HE without me being able to shoot back. And despite it being a Kerr first, um, these guns do some pretty solid damage, when you, especially when you hit, hit destroyers with them. They're pretty good, as you can see. We did nearly 4k there with to him. And their Kerr first is pushed in, so we get to use our secondaries on him. Um, a little note on these secondaries. They are all able to pen 32mm now, which is so nice, because it allows you to take an extra 4-point skill, um, where a lot of the other German battleships need to take IFHE to pen 32mm. This thing doesn't. So... I've taken Concealment instead. Uh, you could argue Fire Prevention, uh, like right now you can see I'm on two fires, about to be three. But um, really not... Um, I think Concealment offers you more ability to use skill in maneuvering and positioning your ship. Whereas Fire Prevention, just you're, you're admitting that you're going to get shot at all the time. Which you, you generally are, but I, I, I enjoy Concealment. And for a map like ocean concealment's actually really important because it does allow you to do these different pushes and positioning um, a little bit easier. Um, Kerr first uh, here I am running the legendary module or unique upgrade I guess um, which does increase um, by secondary and um, main gun reload time or decrease it sorry makes it go faster and it also decreases my range so that's the negative of it but you do get the bonus on both main guns and your secondaries which is nice um unfortunately here as you can see we we got pushed way off the map <laughs> um i'm i am thinking about turning in here but i can't because i know there's a destroyer in c so i would probably get torpedoed here to death um if i just pushed in here because as you can see at this point i don't know that my teammates are going to come back and help me so um, I'm operating on the assumption that I'm alone up here and that my team is doing nothing um, on the other flank, as you can see. So this is not the best spot for a Kerr first, um, but you can see we've tanked, you know, 1.5 million potential damage already, which isn't bad. And for a Kerr first that's lacking range, this isn't a bad game, at least to start. Um, I think this ship does do better on maps with... Um, more close quarters fighting, obviously it's not a sniping ship, um, but since you have 12 guns and you actually have Montana dispersion table, um, you just simply have 1.8 sigma instead of 1.9 sigma like the Montana does, so you can get some pretty accurate salvos every once in a while, which is pretty pretty fun. Um, I do enjoy this ship a lot, um, just because of secondaries really, but I think... Um, I think the Palmern is just better to play simply because it's Matchmaker. Um, the Kerr first is a better ship if you were having a 1v1 with them. Um, maybe not at close range, but at longer ranges than that, Kerr first is going to do better because of the better armor, the better guns, and um, the better secondaries as well. Um, but at its tier, it's weaker than what Palmern is at tier 9. And that's why I would say play, playing Palmern is probably a little bit easier. But this is the um, free equivalent to what a Palmern is, so um, I can see why maybe if you don't have Palmern or you can't get Palmern, this is this is a really good ship to play. It's a lot of fun for me. Um, I don't play it as much now, simply because I have Ohio and Palmern, but um, as far as the free secondary ships, this is as good as it gets in this game. Unfortunately, it seems like Wargaming has locked... Um, a lot of these really amazing secondary ships behind a paywall in the Ohio, Georgia, and Massachusetts all require you to spend money or a ton of time um, grinding, which is the Ohio it takes forever to get. So um, it's cool that Kerr First is um, in the game as far as a secondary ship goes, but I'd like to see it buffed a little bit. Um, it seems a little weak since it only has 406 or 420 millimeter guns, and they don't overmatch anything, and they're not very accurate, and they don't have much range. The secondaries aren't terribly accurate, 
unlike Ohio, which are very accurate, which makes them quite useful. These secondaries really only get their massive amounts of use at closer ranges. Um, that's where they were really powerful, because then you at least hit stuff with them. So I'd like to see, I don't know, like, I, I've, I've talked about this a little bit on my stream, but the legendary module, instead of in, um, buffing your reloads, I would like to see it buff secondary dispersion better. So the unique upgrade would be no changes to the main guns at all. It would just purely be secondary dispersion. It wouldn't even increase their reload speed or decrease their reload speed. It would just be to give this ship, let's say, Ohio dispersion on the secondaries or Graf Zeppelin dispersion on the secondaries. You know, that would be that would be a kind of cool upgrade. Um, you'd be really lacking on your main guns then, but uh, I think that would be kind of a fun thing where if you get into range, then boy, look out because your ship's a little scary. Um, unfortunately, I was lagging here. Um, my internet's a little questionable sometimes, but um, we can get through it a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty much the curve first. Um, I do think that Ohio is a better ship as far as secondary ships go. Um, just because it's got that heal that allows it to push in. Again, this has a standard heal that doesn't come up uh, nearly as quickly. Um, and being able to overmatch things is really crucial at this at tier 10. Being able to get over that 30 millimeter hump uh, is massive for dealing damage to cruisers. But as you can see, these guns do come together every once in a while and do some massive damage. Um, as you can see, I was trying to get onto their broadsides here. That's why I wasn't pushing directly at them. I was trying to get on their, these Stalingrad sides, hoping that the uh, Ohio and Wooster would keep their attention for long enough. But, um, well, my team kind of just folded on the other side of the map, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's kind of the curve first. Um, yeah, Ocean is a cool map, and I wish it would be played more. Despite it being seemingly lazy game design, um, these it's it's all about a positioning. This map is just all about positioning in the open and getting an advantageous position, like you saw here on my on this, where I'm getting these broadside shots on these cruisers. Um, and I wish it would be played more because it seems like a little bit more skill-intensive map. Um, islands give cruisers and a lot of ships, even battleships the ability to just hide behind them and shoot at enemies for free and not have to risk their ship at all. And if you know me, um, I don't really like it when there's, uh, when you can't, when you don't have to risk anything to deal damage to the enemy team. I don't really like that kind of gameplay. So that's why I like Ocean. Um, it could be that I've just not played it very much, so that's uh, another factor. Um, but yeah. Curve first guns are definitely hit and miss, as you can see. There might have been some lag there that I don't really know where those landed, but uh, to me, that should have been Citadels, but eh, you never know. <laughs> Unfortunately though, uh, my team just, yeah, completely folded around me, so we did pretty good on our positioning here this game, I think. Um, we did a pretty solid job, but I mean, in regular matchmaking without a division, you're not going to win every game, and that's fine. So, yeah, pretty fun. Um, maybe an un unusual way to play the Kerr first, uh, considering you wouldn't necessarily pick this on open water maps, but um, I actually like it. I actually like it on open water maps. Um, it's all about that positioning and angling properly, and not over committing to, uh, to a certain flank, like like my team did and then and then just collapsing and letting the enemy team get all the caps so yeah pretty fun game end up with 150k which i think is pretty solid for what what that game was not too many secondary hits it's hard to get a lot of secondary hits these days considering um how passive things are these days but uh i don't know 139 hits isn't bad and we do end up being uh second on the scoreboard so our ohio did pretty well as far as points goes but um, as we saw in the beginning, he didn't really position very well to help us win that game. Uh, the winning play was to push with me, even though he kind of ran away back to spawn. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, I hope you can kind of see why I enjoy Ocean so much. Um, yeah, have a good day.